So we're going to start a demonstration of the Ladybird operating system, what an operator would do as they were to come up and inspect PCBs for your THT process. So the first thing they would do is double click on the Ladybird icon. It's going to ask them for their password and user ID. This way, all of the inspection tests and results will be tied to that operator doing the inspection. As the system opens up the software, it will immediately bring them to the test screen and ask them to insert the circuit board and begin the test process. So at this point, we have uh, a serial number that's being tracked for the assembly. So we will scan a serial number and tie this to the inspection. And as you can see, when we scan that serial number, we'll start the inspection and it will do the inspection of all of the positions and then feed back the data accordingly. So as you can see, our reference image is here on the left. We are expecting to see this capacitor, which is located in this position on the PCB, with the polarity facing this direction. So the steps that have failed are the three polarity steps. You'll see this is the actual image that was seen by the ladybird, as you can see here. And then it's going to ask us for a reason. So in this case, we've got polarity. We're going to fail that. But we're also going to switch and correctly fix that error. Again, we have a connector on the upper left. It's CN1A reference number. Part number is here. Our board ID from the serial number is here. So you'll see that we're supposed to be facing in this direction, and we're obviously in the wrong polarity. So we will rotate this part. We'll click Fail so that we now have a record of that misplaced part. And then the next component would be this diode. Again, it is also failing for polarity. The two steps of polarity that you can see on the reference image here are looking for two gray spaces here. And there are no gray spaces found in this location, so we'll fail that for polarity. This next component is a CN5A. It is supposed to be pink. It's actually orange. So we're going to click for the wrong part so that we identify that it has been placed incorrectly. And clearly what has happened is these two components were misplaced accidentally. So we'll fix the proper location for CN6A to be the right color. We will indicate wrong part, fail it. And then what you see here on this uh, relay is um, the part is supposed to be fully flush and seated to the PCB, and one of the legs weren't fully inserted. So we call that a lifted part. At this point, we'll indicate it as lifted. We'll click fail. And now the close button becomes fully active. And this allows us to now inspect the same PCB again and confirm that we have populated the PCB correctly. So from here, what I want to show you is the test records that are created from this process. And we would find those under this particular location that we have sent those records to. So this is our first failed record. So you'll see the serial number is listed here. This is the equipment name. The operator that logged in is me. The result is fail, time date stamp, and then each of the components are listed as the reference designator, the reason it failed, and then the steps that were seen by the ladybird. So all of these are captured for this particular serial number as a fail. But since we fixed the assembly and reran it through, you'll see that the same serial number with a different time date stamp is indicating that now this serial number has been populated correctly and the result is pass. So this gives us a closed loop feedback from the errors that were presented to the ladybird and the 
fixing of those errors prior to wave soldering and ultimately sending in to the wave solder a correctly assembled board.